it's not so easy to uh, characterize how Londoners in general perceived the plague in medical terms because there were so many different schools of thought embracing a variety of diagnoses and treatments. By 1665, the traditional Galenic humoral understanding of disease favored by the College of Physicians had come under sustained attack from the newer chemical Paracelsian or Helmontian physicians. Proponents of one or other school, school of thought confidently promoted their own view and attacked their rivals. Galenic physicians largely saw the problem as one of internal balance and resistance to disease, so that purging and bloodletting played an important role in their treatment, while chemical practitioners sought cures in nature and treated patients with minerals and metals. London, of course, also had a large number of non-professional practitioners, empirics, wise women, herbalists, practicing more traditional medicine, and London apothecaries stocked an enormous range of substances and remedies. Plague books and pamphlets comprised a large subsection of medical publishing, especially in plague years. Londoners could choose from a wide range of publications in many formats and price levels, with a similarly wide range of theoretical and practical approaches. It's not clear, actually, that having such a variety of conflicting views to choose between was necessarily reassuring, but it can't be said that Londoners uh, were short of information. And I can't run through uh, all the publications, even of 1665, but perhaps if I give a short account of two or three, it'll give a flavour of what was being offered. Uh, a modest offering from the traditional Galenic camp was the anonymous Directions for the Prevention and Cure of the Plague, fitted for the poorer sort, a short six-page pamphlet offering homely advice on diet. Abstain from the boiled herbs of cauliflowers, cabbage, colworts, spinach and beets, and some inexpensive remedies drawn from the Galenic pharmacopoeia, like the one illustrated here. Although it doesn't seem to be an official publication, there's a sense in which it is speaking for authority because its instructions and its advice are very much in line with the plague orders. Uh, indeed, several of its recommendations are actually um, mandated by the plague orders. And it seems to be, as it were, the view of authority as to how the poor should behave or be treated in time of plague. One of many professional medics to seize the opportunity offered by the epidemic was Gideon Harvey, uh, a naturalized Dutchman trained at Leiden claiming the degree of MD. He published his Discourse of the Plague probably in July or early August 1665. And at that point, uh, the pestilence had reached, uh, in, in his view, um, the second stage, the augment, when deaths and sources of infection were increasing, but not yet its third stage, the state, at which time people die thickest. Uh, that time was to be expected at the end of August or in September, and indeed the bills bear out this proposition. So he's definitely writing in the middle of the plague uh, and for people uh, for whom it's a very real presence. <coughs> Harvey believed that the disease was bred in the earth and exhaled into the air as flaming arsenical corpuscles. These might infect people directly or they might gather and multiply in what he called pestilential seminaries or seed beds, which were sort of dark, um, musty places. He offered a range of advice from prevention and preservation through avoidance of excess and dangerous encounters to prophylactics if, if exposed to infection, bloodletting, purging, antidotes made of various ingredients, including sulfur, antimony, and camphor. An infected person should be treated with sudorific or sweat-inducing compounds and restored with cordials and juleps. So his approach actually combined both galenic or humoral analysis and treatment with more chemical remedies, given that sulfur and metals were favored by the chemical physicians. Also published during the plague of 1665, because again, he says these contagious times, though we don't have a precise date, was George Thompson's Loimologia, for the most part, a sustained critique of Galenic theory, practice, and practitioners, especially bloodletting and purging, and also the notion of astrological influence. I haven't actually tried to measure how much of his book is taken up with attacks on other physicians rather than useful remedies, but it certainly seems like quite a lot. He took the view that plague was airborne, 
a venomous gas or a subtle poison, either generated within or penetrating from without. He argued that disease attacked the vital spirit or archaeus, which should therefore be fortified mentally and morally against such an assault. He thought the present plague was a new disease, closely related to scurvy, though his idea of scurvy was not exactly the same as ours, and that it should be treated simply with scorbutical remedies mixed with anti-pestilential and alexipharmacal medicines. Uh, and he wasn't above recommending some of his own medicines in the book. He was a prolific and polemic writer, uh, and he followed up Loimologia with Loimatomia the following year, uh, again challenging the Galenists and asserting the superiority of his diagnosis and remedies. Um, certainly in the first book, he challenges the Galenists to, uh, to share in an anatomy or, or a post-mortem of a plague victim um, and to show him exactly where they thought the plague was, was cited. And I think that's really what we're looking at here. He argued that plague was a new, perhaps a compound disease, but much of the medical literature on plague was a simple rehash of material printed in earlier epidemic years. It could be that uh, older works had a tried and tested, tested appeal uh, in the flux of competing offerings. Many of the most popular remedy collections, reprinted at intervals through the 16th and 17th centuries, included a section on plague which changed little from one edition to the next. So, for example, at least nine editions of a book entitled A Rich Storehouse or Treasury for the Diseased set forth for the benefit and comfort of the poorer sort of people that are not of ability to go to the physicians, uh, were published between 1596 and 1650. Broadly Galenic in approach, it offered 805 remedies arranged alphabetically by complaint from aches to worms, and it had a very large section on plague, both preservatives and cures, but these were almost exactly the same in the last editions as in the first. <coughs> 